You're watching MMA Odds Break. I'm Frank Trigg. That's Troy Beltran. Get ready to fight Vladimir Medeshenko. Coming up here on April 11th in Pechanga Resort Casino for uh, Bellator. Joey, I interviewed Vladimir a couple days ago. He said, win, lose, or draw. You're his last fight. He's going to be tired after he's fought you. Um, yeah, I didn't, I didn't hear that before either. I haven't heard it anywhere else before that this is it. But he told me in our interview that win, lose, or draw, he's done. That there's, he's 43 years old. At 27 and 7, he's had enough. He's done enough. He's fought for the title twice. He's gone on and he's okay with it. You know, he's ready to move on to the next stage of his life. Does that change the meaning of this fight now for you coming up here the next couple of weeks? Because it is Vladimir's last fight. And he's one of the, you know, one of the original, he's the second tier of OGs that kind of came through the game. Uh, I mean, I think regardless, like I, I kind of knew that that's probably what his, the stage of his career he was at. I knew, um, <laughs> Yeah, man, he's been doing it for a while. He's definitely somebody that, that I that I grew up watching and and have a ton of respect for. But at the same time, at the same time, I need a win. I'm coming off two straight losses, uh, you know. And if he wants to go, I'm gonna um, do my best to send him out with a bang. You know, when you say come off two straight losses, the uh, the fight before that was a no contest, and then yeah. you had a loss just before that as well. So now you're looking at, with a no contest. You have like four fights in a row where you haven't won. And it's been a, it's been a tough road for you as of late, but you every time I talk to you, you seem to have this this great ability. And when you fought Quentin Rampage Jackson in your last fight, you were doing pretty well against him before you got caught. It's like you're getting better, things are coming together. You're starting to be a better athlete, a better fighter. But just as of late, you've had a problem getting into the W column. Has there been something going on outside of training camp or in your personal life that we don't know about that's kind of caused some of these losses to happen? No, no. I mean, I just think I, I, I really believe that I'm, I'm, I'm on the right path. And, and if I was getting, getting smoked in these fights, or you know, you know, just going out and laying, laying, laying shitty performances, that'd be one thing, you know. But I just really feel, you know, I, you know, there's that maybe one little inch, one little thing, you know. I had my hand this high when Rampage to that hook. If it would have been this high, who knows what would have happened? Um, you know, fuck, man. So no, I'm, I'm not anywhere near retiring uh i'm getting better in the gym getting better in my fights and and fuck man i just have i just have faith in myself and i know that once it turns the, the beautiful thing about mma is like you're only as good as your last fight the beautiful and the shitty thing you're only as good as your last fight you know what i mean so a couple good performances especially in my position in, in bellator I, i'm looking at bellator uh, as a uh, you know a huge opportunity I have a clean slate with them at the 205 weight class. Rampage fight was at 210, catch weight. Yep. So technically I'm undefeated uh, at 205 with them. I'm looking at it like that. I win this fight. I win uh, a four-man tournament. All of a sudden, in three fights, I'm fighting for the world title. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and there's very few people in the world, you know, they, they can say that fucking potentially in three fights they can fight for a world title in the yeah. sport that they've trained their entire, you know, their adult life for. You know, I'm there. I'm right there. And I know that, you know, it'll make for an awesome story when I finally do, you know, when I, when I tip. How do you, how do you deal with the, the frustration of it? Because you are training hard. Your coaches are telling me you're training hard. Your partners are telling me you're training hard. And like you said, it's a matter of inches a lot of times. Of what's going to, you know, that's the win and that's the loss. It's a matter of inches. How do you deal with that daily frustration of, of I'm right there, I'm touching on it, and, le and legitimately I am three fights away from fighting for the title, but I got to get three wins in a row. I, I just, I, you know, I have a really, you know, a deep faith in, in myself and, and um, you know, and that I, I'm doing the right thing and, and I'm on the right path and I just have to just keep, be strong. And there is times when I, I do feel like, you know, I have, I have a couple times, especially in these last few fights, where I feel like, damn, I should just wrap it up. And then, you know, just get back in the gym and I feel, that's where I feel normal. That's where I feel I'm happy. And, you know, and... Wins and losses, yeah, fuck. I mean, I would want to win every fight, but at the end of the day, I'm progressing every day, and I really feel that that's where happiness in, in a human being's life really comes from prog from progress, not just achievements. Because there's people that achieve and achieve and achieve, but but you know, then they're, they're not still not happy, you know. But I, I I really I believe that happiness is found in in daily progress, and I can believe. I mean, I do believe that every day I'm getting better. You know, and uh, it's just, it's about that time. Now is my time. I really do feel it's its, it's coming close to it. I'm going to pop. <laughs> what's, the, what's the toughest part of training camp for you? Like, what's the, going through a training camp again, like, what's the hardest part for you? Uh, wrestling Phil Davis. <laughs> <laughs> Says everybody all the time. Yeah, yeah. grappling Phil Davis. The, 
go go gadget arms and his hands that are like this long and you'll you'll have your arm out like that and he'll somehow reach all the way around your body and trap your wrist and you just feel like a small child in his hands um you know but but honestly man and that's another reason why too that i i i feel you know truly happy is i love i love training i love it i love exercising i love being healthy i love eating right not all the time but you know yeah when, when, when there's a goal at hand, I, you know, I love the process of making weight. Like every time that I do it, I'm like, ah, I'm not that bad. And, you know, I just dropped like, you know, 35 pounds and people every day are like, ah, I just can't lose five pounds. Like, yeah, you can, if you were disciplined and you had a plan and you stuck to it, don't tell me you can't do something. And, um, you know, so I, I'm truly happy in the gym and nothing really, really bugs me. Obviously sprints and running sucks, but yeah. You know, what comes from running sprints, I enjoy, and that's having, you know, good cardio. What, uh, do you really get up to around 240 in between fights? Whew, yeah. I get up to 240 after a, after a, after a heavy weekend. That's, that's like, that's a, that's the heavyweight size now. A lot of guys are coming in around 245, 250 as a heavyweight. How can we make the jump up to heavyweight? Um, you know, I, I really, um, I like, I like the, uh, I like fighting people my own size. I never used to think it, it, it didn't used to matter on the, like on the regionals and, and even those first couple fights in the UFC. But then it was like, then you got motherfuckers like Mitrion and, and Steepy Myosic that are giant people that move really fast, have good cardio and actually have skill. It just sucks because you, you have to deal with, you know, the six inches of reach, 30 pounds weight advantage before you even talk about what they have as far as a skill set. So I like 205. Um, you know, I've, I've uh, it's been just really getting my bearings and, and getting get my getting ready to rock and roll. But I like, you know, I have supreme confidence in myself, confidence in, in my training and my coaches, and I I really feel that it's, you know shit's about to turn around. It's gonna be good. Yeah, you do. See, you have that confidence, and like I said, a lot of coaches and, and your and your training partners have said that you're getting so much better, and it's frustrating for them as well that you're not getting the wins that you deserve because you are doing so much better. The, um, was Phil Davis your main training partner for, for Vladimir? Uh, I had a couple. I had Phil Davis. Um, uh, geez, I'm drawing a blank. <laughs> uh, Phil Davis, um, another uh, another one of my teammates who's lesser known, who, who's actually making his debut on the prelim card on the same night. His name is Ray Sloan. He's a 6-0, 205-er, uh, uh, fighting on the prelims the same night. Uh, we also have Rafael Butler that I've – Love maybe because I'm a little sadistic, but I love boxing with him. He's a heavyweight on Bellator, undefeated. He was a you know 35 and eight as a pro boxer, you know with 29 knockouts. So it goes without saying the guy has some hands. And he's yeah. six four, six four two seventy, like a real pro boxing heavyweight. What a real <laughs> pro boxing heavyweight looks like, and you know it's it's kind of a running joke. But it comes on sparring days. I'm the only one that jumps in there, and you know I volunteer. Like I want all the rounds of Roth. <laughs> whatever he has, I want him, you know, it's, but, uh, yeah, Phil, Phil Davis for sure. I suppose, you know, you can't really get much better than that in the grappling department, re grappling, wrestling, you know, especially for MMA, the way he's been able to adapt his, uh, you know, his NCAA skills and transfer them into the cage. So, uh, yeah, that's basically who I've been going with. Joy, I know it's Sunday and it's family day for you. So I, I apologize for having to pull you up on a Sunday, but thank you so much for spending some time with us here at MMA Oddsbreaker. It's going to be an interesting fight. And for me, obviously, I've been friends with Vladimir for over 20 years. So for this, for this to be his last fight, for me, this is to be, it's a special fight for me to watch and see how he does. And like I said, when loser draw, he's walking out of there. Uh, he's going to be done. And so, you know, someday you'll be a, a history question. Who is Vladimir's yeah. last fight against? It'll be interesting to see how, how he walks away and what he does. And if he's really done, because he's also Russian, so they're kind of like, I'm done. And then next week he's like, ah, screw it, I got one more. Okay, I'll do one more. Okay, I'll do one more. So he never really walks away, but we'll see. Yeah, you know, like I said, I mean, at the end of the day, I, there's definitely a, a huge amount of respect. But man, I got, I need that, uh, I need that win check. I need to move on to that tournament and uh, get this party started. All right, Joey. Good luck. Good luck on April 11th. We'll talk to you soon, bud. All right. Thank you.